Many African Americans can trace their ancestry back to a variety of tribes in Africa. And many tribes were historically nomads that traveled all throughout Africa and the whole entire world thousands of years before slavery. The earliest known vessels were built in ancient Africa over 40,000 years ago. So it should come as no surprise that Africans had an early head start at exploring the world. And they left a piece of their culture everywhere they went. The Tikar tribe is only one of many nomadic tribes that settled in many different parts of Africa. Oral tradition traces their origin back to the Nile River Valley, which is modern day Sudan. They speak a modern Bantoi language called Tikar. They now inhabit the Bamenda grass fields in Cameroon. They are closely related to the Bamaleke people. When they inhabited Sudan, they lived adjacent to the Moro kingdom, as well as the ancestors of the Fulani people. They lived along the Nile River where they developed cattle grazing, iron making, horseback riding, and their fighting skills. The Tikar people relocated to Cameroon around 933 CE. They settled in the northeast region near Lake Chad and Adamawa. They established their own village there called the Nganha. They called their chiefs Fan. Nayasana became the first to establish a fando and created a royal lineage. The Tikar people continued to migrate and they ended up in the Bamenda Plateau region. With the skills they brought over from Sudan, the king was efficient enough to rule most of the northern and central region of Cameroon. The Tikar Empire had strong political traditions. At its height, it had 15 kingdoms. The Ngambe was the largest and it birthed future kings and the ruling class. All kingdoms were ran by a fan that supervised nobles, big time farming producers, military leaders, merchants, and town leaders. Takar military soldiers protected the region with superior weapons and they were skilled at fighting on horseback. They maintained domestic peace and imposed hefty taxes on other ethnic groups. A caste system did exist, but regardless of your status, Takars typically lived a very good life. They were known for their sophisticated government, their war abilities, and the arts, including mask making. They developed a process using hot wax to make masks and bronze structures. Many Tikar people were also gifted in dancing, music, writing, and acting. Tikar boys took part in vocational training and they learned various forms of craft making as well as wood and mass carving and creating bronze structures. They were the only ones in the area that could smelt iron. Their artistry put them at the center of trade. For centuries, the Tikar people ruled over Cameroon with an iron fist. Nayasana's direct descendant, Tuk Gakor, ruled from 1186 to 1217. Princess Wu Ten established the Tikar dynasty in 1299. She ruled for over 30 years. The Tikar now contains over 42 ethnic groups. By the 1800s, several ethnic groups joined the Europeans to fight the Tikar people. They were known for their quick ability to learn. However, their sophistication earned them the title of most envied amongst a few neighboring tribes. This caused them to be caught in the middle of Europeans that wanted to enslave them and jealous neighbors. The Tikar people failed to obtain modern weapons to defend and take control of the coast. They were forced to relocate due to the lack of protection on their traditional grassy and savanna plains. They tried digging moats around their villages to protect themselves from their enemies, but this attempt failed. Many of them ended up having to hide in forests in order to escape slavery, Islamization, and Christianization. Some escaped and some were captured and enslaved and forced to convert. The transatlantic slave trade unfortunately drained some of their most physically fit and intelligent young people. Being that they were greatly weakened by war and the slave trade, they became vulnerable to neighboring groups who had been subjected by the Tikar for centuries and wanted revenge. By the time slavery ended, there were only about 100,000 Tikars in Cameroon, and most of them were hiding out in nearby forests. 
The Tikar people split into smaller villages to try to escape slave hunters. Today they live in small and scattered related groups in the northwestern highlands near the Nigerian border. The conversion of some of the Tikar to Islam caused an even further divide between them. Many of them speak different languages as a result of slave owners intentionally separating the people that spoke the same language during the Atlantic slave trade. However, many of them are still aware of their ancestors and culture in common. Tikar masks were used during agricultural ceremonies, such as during the harvest. They believe that soil is sacred and belongs to the ancestors. Therefore, once there was successful harvest, they used their handcrafted masks to celebrate. Their main crops are cocoa, coffee, bananas, plantains, sugarcane, cassava, and many more. 